Hello and welcome back to Premier League Predictions, the show which does what it says on the tin. It's game week 32 of the 2022-23 Premier League season and we're here to predict all the action. Unfortunately, not a lot to bring you this week. It is a shortened game week, a lot of teams not in action due to FA Cup fixtures, but... We do still have some interesting games to run through, so we're going to do our best to make this a very exciting Prem Predictions, despite the fact there is only eight matches. But there are some decent games in there. Speaking of which, let's get started. The Friday night game, current Premier League leaders Arsenal welcome bottom of the league, Southampton. I think this has potential to be a really, really interesting game. Arsenal slipped up a couple times recently. They're allowing Man City back in that title race. Do you think they'll slip up again? Uh, no, I think I, I think Arteta will want to make a point. You know, they dropped points to West Ham last week. They cannot afford to do that again. We know Arsenal aren't very good at killing off teams, as I mean Arteta admitted in the post-match conference to West Ham. So I don't yeah. expect a battering, but I do think Arsenal will win, especially at home. I will go two 0 Arsenal with goals from Saka and Odegaard. Yeah, it, I think it's very much necessary they get a win here they can't afford to drop points again as you say and Southampton bottom of the league it's very easy opposition I feel Arsenal will be frustrated they've dropped points in recent weeks because the Premier League title very much looked like it was theirs but now they're probably going to lose to City yeah. on Wednesday if they do lose that game City go ahead of them in the title race and that doesn't and it doesn't matter what happens in the Southampton game obviously with a game in hand, yeah. City goes up to like a point, and with a match in hand, but you don't expect City to slip up from here to the no, end of the season. So no. it means Arsenal will have to go to the Etihad and win, or pray for a City cock up. So they put themselves in a bad spot. I don't think they'll make it any worse. I think no. Arsenal two Southampton nil is a fair score, and I think Arsenal are really, really good. And I think they will just show enough quality to beat Southampton here. I'll go for goals from Bukayo Saka. And Gabriel Jesus, he's looked really good yeah. since he's returned from injury. Uh, potentially, I think he could spark that. Be that spark that changes Arsenal's fortunes of late. But equally, they've, only, they've, they've drawn two oh, games from him in the yeah. side. So maybe he's the problem. But I'm sure, I'm sure that's completely untrue. Anyway, on to the Saturday. Only five games here. The first of which are 12.30 kickoff. Fulham host Leeds. You expected this to be a relegation fight, but Fulham, as I say every week, really performing above expectations, very much in that fight for Europe and should be guaranteed top half. Leeds very much the other end of the ladder. They are very. I think they're my t- ties. I tip most likely to go down. They've now come off the consecutive five one six one losses, so consecutive big losses. Yeah, oh, what is there to smile about for Leeds fans right now? It's two teams in absolute dire form. Uh, but I just, I mean, yes, Fulham aren't playing great at the moment, but Leeds are playing. Uh, they're not playing. They're, turn, yeah. they're just turning up and, you know, just standing there. Who'd have thought? Javi Gracia, who looked out of, the depth, out of, depth, out of his depth in the Championship, Why? isn't going to do anything. Well uh, I don't think it's going to be as big of a loss because, as I said, Fulham aren't playing to their strengths at the moment and yeah. you know, so they're missing a few key players. I still think it will be 3-0 Fulham. No, I'll go 3-1 because Leeds always <laughs> score a goal. Uh, I'll go 3-1 Fulham with goals from Decordova Reed. Yeah. Uh, per- Andreas Pereira and Tim Ream. And then it'll be a Leeds consolation from Jack Harrison. If Fulham had Alexander Mitrovic, I would, I'd expect a big win for them. But I don't think they score three goals without Mitro. I still think they'll win. So, you know, any Leeds fans getting excited there, getting yeah. your hopes up, don't. I'm going to go 1-0 Fulham, though. I think it'll be a bit of magic from Willian. Potential Andreas Pereira assist. It'll be one of those two that comes up with something. And, uh, yeah, I think Leeds, again, will another loss as they slip further down at the Premier League table and closer to relegation. I think they're... At, as I say, probably the side most likely to go down other than Southampton. So, yeah, Fulham should have no problems dispatching of them, especially at home. Yeah. First of the three o'clock kickoffs, then Brentford versus Aston Villa. Brentford, a side whose early season form has left them high in the Premier League table. And Aston Villa, well, since Christmas, they've been absolutely unplayable. Ollie Watkins in the form of his life. Unai Emery's Villa side barely conceding a goal at the minute. 
Away to Brentford will be a tough match, but I think they've got the minerals of taking something from the ma- from the game. They should win. What are your thoughts, Harry? Oh uh, yeah, I feel a little look have looked brilliant and I think you know ex-Brentford players Esri Cons and Roddy Watkins returning to their former club mm. I think they will have the last laugh I'm going to go 3-1 Villa Ollie Watkins at the double with a Bertrand Traore goal and a Brentford Ivan Tony penalty yeah that's that seems quite reasonable actually Tony has got a pen I don't think Brentford are going to score. Once again, I think Villa have looked really good. I don't think we're seeing as many errors. Sure, if you look at the first half of the season, I'd be going 100%. Either Tyrone Mings or Ezra Conn is going to go through someone or handball it or make some other error. Give away a pen. Tony doesn't miss penalties. Here, though, I do think Villa look incredibly strong at the moment. They look very compact as a defence. They don't make as many errors as they used to. I think they'll keep up that strong level of performance. I think it'll be a comfortable... 2-0 victory away. It's yeah. well pretty similar to what they did against Newcastle. Obviously, that game was at home, but they're dispatching a team at the moment, Villa, with relative ease. Yeah. They're not conceding any, if you know, many, if at all, at the moment. So, I think they'll keep that up. And obviously, Ollie Watkins in absolute, fo- uh, you know, sensational form. Yeah. I think he'll keep that up. I think he'll get a brace. Aston Villa, a comfortable win away at Brentford. Up next, Crystal Palace versus Everton. A couple weeks ago, both these sides very much in the thick of a relegation scrap. But Crystal Palace, a renewed charge under Roy Hodgson. Everton have tapered off a little bit since Sean Dyche's appointment. This is probably Palace's biggest test because so far they've faced a tragic lead side and Southampton who are bottom of the league. So do you think Palace will be up for this test? Do, they think, do you think it'll be another win I mean, for the Eagles? It's the best battle, battle in English football. You've got Roy Hodgson and Sean Dyche. <laughs> yeah. Can't Two four four teams better. against each other. Very it's exciting. It's going to be brilliant. But as you say, I think Palace have just got that you know, the spirit. They're absolutely flying at the moment. They're on the coattails of Chelsea now. Um, yeah, and, and to be fair, when we look at that Palace side, they should never have been down there anyway. They're no, clearly no. a very good se- and team, and I think... Hodgson's made yeah. him play some really nice football. Hodgson's at the wheel, 2-1 Palace. Uh, I'll go Palace goals for Elise and Eze and mm. Everton goal from... Oh, blimey. Um, Dwight McNeil. Fair enough. I mean, a bit of a rogue shot. I think Everton's got only goals this season come from their centre-halves, but... I, do, I yeah. don't think they're going to score in this game again. That's Everton's biggest issue. Even if they can somehow keep a clean sheet, they're not going to take three points because they can't score unless they get it from a set piece. I do think Palace will score a couple. I think I'm going to go 3-0 Crystal Palace. And similar goal scores as you. Eze and Elise both got to be in there for me. They've been sensational recently, especially Eberique Yetze, who's got a goal in both games. Obviously, Elise got four assists against Leeds. I don't think... Yeah, they'll have as much. I don't think it'll be a ridiculous game, but 3-0 seems a, re- a reasonable scoreline. I think Jordan Ayer will get that third. Up next then, Leicester versus Wolves, a battle in the Midlands, sort of. They're both in that area, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but neither side... Well, the, the, the Leicester in the relegation, I was about to say neither side really at risk of going down, but Leicester are literally in the relegation zone. I keep forgetting this. They yeah. are at home... Dean Smith's first chance to really prove a point. Because to be fair, Man, Man City, City was unreasonable. That too good. First right? half, yeah, they lost three 0 but they won the second half one 0 I don't think you get any points for. I know, but he'll look at that and go as a positive. I think he'll be looking at it as if they hadn't took Haaland off, they would have probably got the double figures. No. <laughs> uh, and Wolves just Wolves are very up and down. One minute I yeah. think, oh, you know, they've played really well there. They've beaten them. They look good. Next minute they're losing to Leeds. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's they're bizarre. inconsistent wolves, and but, you know I don't. I mean, recently they've done well. They won last time out, right? Diego Costa scored, or yeah, what, claimed a victory over. I want to say Bournemouth, but it wasn't. Was it? I can't remember who they was played. It Brentford? I think no. it might have been. Ooh. I can't remember who Brentford played last. I know Diego Costa scored. Yeah, I do, I do know Diego Costa scored, but will he keep up that rich form? Leicester a bit poor. Wolves mm. with Diego Costa in. You know, he scored a goal. One goal in yeah. one game. That's, that's on count. We're not counting the other if, ten If John whatever. Terry can have the same effect on Vout Face and the lesser defence like he did with Tyro Mings and the Villa defence, and we know Dean Smith is capable of keeping a team in the Premier League, Yeah. and especially you, know, you look at Dean Smith's home form at Aston Villa, 
Very important to get the home crowd on side, yeah. and I think he will. I'm going to go for a 2 1 Leicester win. Yeah, you mentioned um, Terry there. Obviously, he's already performing miracles. Without face, hasn't scored yeah. any own goals I know, it's recently, so that's a good change. I will go. Your goal scorers. I'll go face. Inacho double. Oh, I don't think that's and, anything, got anything and, to do with um, FPR, has it? But Diego Costa will still score for Wolves. <laughs> Fair enough. I think this is Wolves' game to win. I think Wolves are a really strong team. Probably. Well, not a really strong team, but better than Leicester. And that Julian Lopetegui, the system works sometimes. Other it's, it doesn't. I think it's going to really work here. I'm going to go Leicester nil, Wolves 3. And I think the higher-ups will start to question whether Dean Smith was the right man for the no, job. They won't. I'm going to go goals from. I was going to go Goncalo Guedes, and I forgot they literally got rid of him after yeah. six months. He's only like on loan. I'm going to go Costa. Got to yeah. back it every single game week. Daniel Pudence, I don't even know if he's fit, but he's yeah. scoring a goal anyway. And then Matthias Nunez, very impressed with this strike against Chelsea a couple of weeks back. I think I'll produce a, an effort of similar quality to help the Wolves to victory here. Up next then, Liverpool versus Nottingham Forest. I don't remember the reverse fixture. I was thinking, because for a moment I thought, oh, Liverpool won this 9-0, but it was... Oh, I do remember the reverse fixture. Nottingham Forest yeah, won, didn't they? Right. 1-0. I, I was thinking it was the Bournemouth game for a moment. The 9-0 win. I was going, oh, Forrest is going to hate this. But no, actually... The mayoral took it at 12.30 and uh, Forrest won Yeah, yeah, I do, I do so, have... Do yeah, I do recall that now. Whether Nottingham Forest can pull no. that off again is the question. You don't think not? <laughs> I don't okay. think not. Lovely no, little do use not. of a double um, negative. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Liverpool look much stronger now and Forrest... Oh, I mean, they haven't really changed. But yeah. Liverpool look a lot stronger... I mean, they were brilliant against Leeds, and I think I don't think they're battering, but I still think it'll be very convincing from the Reds. I'm going to go three nil Liverpool with yeah. a Salah double and a goal from Gakpo, and yeah, three 0 Liverpool. Fair enough. Yeah, I agree. I also don't think not. I think for Forest, they've been all right, but they're not gonna. They're not setting the world alight. And Liverpool, well, that Leeds game, I think. A lot of fans questioning whether that's something, you know, whether they should be taking much from it. I think they should. I think they will. I think they'll take momentum from it. I think they'll play well. So, you know, a lot of fans want to downplay it. They don't want to big up Liverpool too much considering how up and down they've been this season. But I think they will. I think they'll play well here. I'm going to go Liverpool 4, Nottingham Forest 1. I still feel there's a Forest goal in there. I think they'll open the scoring at Anfield. And, you know, Dave from... Merseyside, so I don't know any place in Liverpool. He's going to be slapping sideboards, but I, th- I think after that he'll be jumping up and down in joy. Not going to first goal. Morgan gives White seems like he'll just, you know, place one top corner from about yeah. 40 yards out and everyone will be stunned for a bit. And then they'll be stunned by how quickly Liverpool turn it around. Mo Salah, hat trick, and a goal. A goal from. I was going to say Adam Lallana, but he's left. I want to go for like a rogue centre mid. Right. Naby Keita, Fair if enough. he's fit. If not, Jordan Henderson. All right. And also, if you are uh, if you are called Dave from Liverpool, please yeah. let us know. It'd be brilliant. Yeah. And please, if you're attending the game, slap yeah. a sideboard for us. But yeah, onto the Sunday then. We've only got one game to predict here. Two matches, of course. But the first of those, Bournemouth versus West Ham is the one we're going to be predicting. What are you thinking here? Two sides who... We've got to be worried about relegation. West Ham, big point last time out. Bournemouth, a big win last time out um, against Tottenham. Both yeah. did well in London last week. Will they be able to get a... Who will take the spoils here? I don't know words I mean, this week, yeah. but go on. Bournemouth were brilliant last week. You know, Came back from behind against Tottenham to pull off a brilliant win there. They yeah. look really decent at the moment. West Ham look decent at the, Olymp- at the Olympic Stadium, but if you take them anywhere outside... Uh, London, they struggle massively. Oh, as proven by that Ghent game in the yeah. Conference League, but but I I think it I yeah. think it's gonna be dull. One nil Bournemouth, and it with Dom Solanke header yeah. in the fifty seventh minute. I, th- I think the Conference League's gonna have a big impact. Of course, we are recording before West Ham's second leg. They yeah. could be through, but either way, that's a tough match. Could go to extra time and even penalties, which is going to be fatiguing. Then they've got to get prepared and head down to the south coast. Yeah. Bournemouth are going to have the edge in terms of fitness, and I think they're going to have the edge in the game. I'm going to go Bournemouth 3, West Ham 0. Big win for the Cherries. Don't even... That is, that is their nickname, isn't it? 
Yeah. Yes, the stadium we was cool wrong, but yeah, I think the Cherries they've looked good recently, and I think Dom Solanke is going to score a brace, not just because my FPL team needs the points, and I can also go for a Philip Billing goal. Bournemouth three, West Ham nil. Then the last game of the weekend, Newcastle versus Tottenham. We're not going to be predicting it here. We're going to be live for it. Make yeah. sure to join us from quarter to two. Of course, we'll be keeping tabs as well on the Bournemouth West Ham game throughout. But the priority, the focus, will be Newcastle versus Tottenham. The fight for the Champions League is hotting up, and these two yeah. sides will des will be desperate for the three points. Yeah, yeah, both need to respond from last week. So yeah, Newcastle of course game. losing for uh, by Villa, Tottenham losing to Bournemouth. But <laughs> yeah, we'll not continue Tottenham things and bottle European football. Seems probably that could happen, but yeah, join us there for that game quarter to two on Sunday. That's all from us this week. Yes, very much getting only towards the end of the Premier League season. Only eight games today. We've only got six game weeks after this one. Premier League's getting That's very, close. very yeah. exciting indeed. But yeah, make sure you join us we, for all the streams and all the Prem predictions now until the end of the season. We've got some cracking games coming up. Of course, a midweek Prem predictions to look out for next week. That should Ooh. be exciting, as yeah. Harry is demonstrating yeah. there. That, that was excitement, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> but yeah, so a bonus Prem predictions next week as the uh, Premier League schedule gets incredibly busy. But that is all from us today. Get your comments, get your predictions, I'm sorry, in the comments down below. we love to hear from you guys what you predict for these Premier League games. I'm predicting, a Ch I'm predicting from the comments a Chelsea fan pessimistic prediction yep. and some fairly Chelsea reasonable playing. ones. Yeah, Chelsea not even playing and he'll find a way <laughs> to put Chelsea down. Shout and out to everyone your comments. Yeah, some fairly reasonable ones from everyone else. But, Much yeah. appreciated. <laughs> Thanks for all the comments and yeah, to get involved down there. But make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here. That is all for today. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll see you next time. See ya.